Okay, it's a three person meeting. Okay. So we can't take any votes. So no votes. Um, I had the minutes from the prior two meetings, but at this point, we'll just put that on ice for now. Okay. We had 25 people that responded to the survey. Mm -hmm. The about 70% of the people who responded had businesses with less than 10 employees. And 30% of businesses had more than 11 employees between 11 and 50. All right. Um, the people that responded were from professional services, consultant, financial institutions, animal related services, restaurant bars. So now you can figure out where your numbers are coming from. Restaurants and bars probably had over 10 people. The financial institutions had over 10 people. Um, personal services, recreation, retail stores. Retail stores might be over or under 10. Um, medical providers, manufacturers, that's definitely over 10 and other. Okay. Um, about 30% of the businesses have been in business for over 20 years. 11% of, of the businesses have been in business between 11 and 20 years. 11% and 12% between six and 10 years. 20% have been in business from two to five years. And 27% have been in business for less than a year. So what that's telling me is a lot of the businesses are approximately 46% um, of the businesses have been around for less than five years. Which makes sense for small businesses. Yeah. Especially, especially post, you know, pandemic and post pandemic. Right. Um, I, I have a subscription to Vertical IQ, which provides information on metro areas by county. And interestingly, it shows that more businesses have closed recently compared to the number of businesses opened. And it does it by subject matter. I should actually send that report out to um, all of EDC. Um, so th there's a little bit of a conflict here because the next question asks, rate your experience in dealing with the town of Grafton. 12% said excellent, 50% good, 27% neutral, 8% not applicable, 4% said somewhat unsatisfactory. If you're general, please doing business with Grafton, please choose the reasons that apply. Um, 50% said good customer service. The 23% um, the town is receptive and helpful. 19% supportive of local chambers. Um, Grafton people patronize the business 35%. 69% centrally located. 31% business is thriving. 8% all of the above. Uh -huh. So that makes sense. All right, do you want to say something? No, no. Okay. Yes. So then it asks, if you're dissatisfied doing business in Grafton, please specify. So here's where I saw the conflict, is you had a number of people, um, 13 respondents in total, that said that they were dissatisfied. Um, and they said that they found it difficult. 38% said they found it difficult to deal with the town or certain departments. 15% not getting enough business. 46% said they're finding it hard to get employees and retain employees. 23% um, said due to rising cost and shrinking profit margins. 15% the town was not helpful um, in addressing their concerns. So if I look at this, the, the things that pop out to me is 15% of the businesses said the town's not 
receptive to addressing their concerns. And 38% said it was difficult or challenging to do business with certain departments. So that that's an area of opportunity for improvement. Yes. And I had another um, 10 or 12 uh, people that I interviewed personally. Um, mm -hmm. To, because to delve down. So I understand from looking at that, because this is this was a simple baseline survey to, you know, to give us some responses. Right. Um, in order to do cross tabs, you have to then, we would have had to have drilled down and say, if you say you were dissatisfied, please check the departments that you were dissatisfied with or you know, just was it just general? Was it a certain department or departments? And you would put in select all that apply. So in talking to organizations around town, okay, not, not surprisingly, um, for example, uh, one of the dentist office was very, very specific. Um, and I, I'll, I'll, I'll say the dentist here because, you know, we're not... Uh, it's not gonna, yeah, it's not going to go further. Uh, Theru, Tina Theru, dentist. She she and her husband bought that that whole you know plaza. There's three different businesses there. Well, the ones next door to them too. The, there's another orthodontist, and there's also the um, beauty salon that's there. So Tina said she went the you know she and her husband went through hell with. Um, the buildings inspector, which we knew was going to be an issue. I mean, they couldn't, you know, everything about cutting down trees, you couldn't change one little thing by an inch. And Tina is very articulate. You know, I mean, she's she's a professional woman. She's a, a good businesswoman. And she just felt like they were put through the ringer. Now, now here, here's a pause for a moment. When you submit the plan, you submit what you want to do, and you're saying that you couldn't change the plans. So I question the competency of the engineer because if they wanted to do these things, the engineer puts it on paper, and that's what gets approved. Yes and no. I'm not sure. Do you do either of you go on to um, the Facebook page, All Things Grafton? I'm not on Facebook or. Okay. Well, I'm, this is. I'm not on Facebook not either. Okay. Well, this I was something I was, this was something, well, I, I lurk on all of these things. You know, that's the, mm. that's the investigative reporter in me. And I talk to a lot of people. So I was going to bring this up with you, Ray, you know, also separately as a member of the select board. Um, it's, and I don't have a horse in this race. Let me be very frank. So on Facebook, recently, within the past few weeks, uh, a member of the town, I mean, we're reaching a tipping point here with the buildings inspector. Not so much the buildings department because people like the people who work in, the, the residents here like the people who work in the department. The dissatisfaction, and now I would say the vexation and ire towards the buildings inspector is reaching, has reached critical mass. So on all things Grafton, one of the town residents, a very articulate man got on and said, hey, listen, for years I've heard stories about the building inspector, but then last summer, here's what happened. And he proceeded to um, talk about the the rigor that he was put through, he and his wife, and they were trying to sell their house and they had to make up to, I don't know, $18,000 in change and change to satisfy the buildings inspector. And he asked for people to start commenting. Well, that thread filled up so quickly and it wasn't just, I hate this guy or this, that, and the other thing. I mean, people were giving very long, detailed what I would call dissertations. So this 
fellow here in town, he said, well, we can't, you know, we need case studies and we need stories. He's created a separate group, now private group, for, and he's put together, it's, it's very impressive actually. It's like a spreadsheet so that, and he's putting things in there, data analytics, so he can analyze trends, dates, times, what happens. Um, it's pretty sophisticated actually. And I know on the 14th, there's a ask us anything where the building's inspector is going to be a featured speaker. But what they are preparing to do, I mean, once they get the trends, and he's already got almost 100 people who are coming in to give case studies. This is going to be very problematic for the town. I have seen, and of course, when you get on a Facebook thread, people can say anything. You know, when you're sitting behind a keyboard, people can start spewing and spouting. In this case, this wasn't just somebody who said, hey, um, blah, 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 I'm just mad as hell. You know, it's not like a political argument. But they were giving very detailed things and... <clears throat> At the very least, several of the people alleged improprieties in the way that they were, their personal dealings with the buildings inspector. And by improprieties, I'm not talking anything sexual. Let's be very clear. But where they were treated um, with disrespect, um laughed at and said oh you know because one person their her husband was a professional and they were laughed at and said oh i gave that up long ago um other people have not had a problem which raised the question inevitably and again these are you know this is this is just an allegation there's no proof but somebody said well do you think that there are bribes being taken Oh my God. Okay, that's that, Laura. That's that's enough. So, um, but it, no, 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 we we can't. It, it, it's really what you're talking about. I mean, they're going to have that ask me anything, and Bob's going to be there, and people are going to show up, <clears throat> and they can express their opinions at that point. Um, I really don't care what goes on on Facebook. I, uh, it, I not on it for. I can't express that enough. No, that I, I understand don't that. Care, that I don't care what goes on on Facebook, but but the town has put together the ask me anything, and we've had uh, many of them. I, I've done two of them myself, and um, and and the reason that we have those is so that people can go and people air, can and grie air their grievances and experiences. And, and, and this one, this one on Thursday, the. Um, the building inspector has been invited and people are going to show up. And, and it's not like, I mean, Bob's going to be there. So, you know. I get that. Not, what what I, I'm saying to you is that what I'm seeing <clears throat> now, I'm just giving you a heads up. I'm just reporting what I have seen. I'm not weighing yeah, yeah. in with an opinion. And what I'm saying is this has now gone to what I have seen another level because... So, so so here's the thing if the if people have and it has this really has nothing to do with economic development if people have a problem with with the building inspector or the plumbing inspector the electrical inspector me, the fire chief there is a process that you can for that i know to follow that up and to and to take care of it or or you know express your opinion come before the select board or, or go to the town administrator because those people report to the town administrator, except for the five people, and, and take care of your situation. But it really, you know. Well, we, it, I've, I've just encountered it um, with talking to several, excuse me, several of the businesses in town. Yep. And just verbally doing interviews for the, you know, going over the survey questions for people who haven't had a chance to do that. And, this is the thing that has come up. I mean, the other thing that I found in doing some of these interviews, and I can send you the write-ups, is, you know, a lot of people don't know where to go. 
a lot of the times, you know, and they're not good. They're not necessarily good about going on to the town website, but I have, you know, heard from, from several people. All I'm telling you as a member of the select board is I am just reporting to you what I have seen, which is now people are collecting putting together a spreadsheet, collecting stories, evidence, et cetera. And they are also talking about going to the news media. And and you know what? That's that's fine. Again, I'm just giving you, I'm just, I'm just telling you for informational purposes. I, I know, I know, I know, but, but, um, you know, you, it's, it's, uh, it, it, there's a process. And, and they, I, under, I understand anybody that. Anybody can go through the process of, of you know, if you have a problem with, with a town employee that you go through the process and you, and that's it. But currently, it has absolutely nothing to do with economic development or this committee. And and to be honest with you, um, I, I, you know, I, I appreciate you, you know, giving us this information, but I really... Well, it only does because it was brought up to it was brought up to me when I was talking to people. Yep. So, and I, this is not something I solicited. I just asked the same questions. I did not try and lead anybody. I did not say mm -hmm. mention any you know, departments. Had, nothing. I have had people contact me also, and I tell them there's a process. Go through the process, and 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 that's it. It just you know what what people write on facelift and. You know, he's lived all that, all that crap. I, I really don't care. <laughs> the one thing that caught me off guard is you have people that can get on Facebook and you're telling me that they can't figure out how to call the town administrator's office to ask a question. Or no, go no, on no, the no, website no, 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 that's a separate, that's a separate it, issue. What it's I'm a separate saying is, issue, but I'm, I'm confused at how you can get on Facebook, but you can't figure out how to get the telephone number. For the town administrator to ask a question, that to me doesn't. Well, obviously, anybody uh, with a trip with a triple digit IQ can figure these things out. It's do they take the time to do it? You know, there's a lot of people who don't show up to meetings to air their grievances or go through the process, but right. are keyboard warriors and they complain. We understand that. Right. Okay. So I I, I think we both kind of expressed what our thoughts were. Yeah. Um, getting back to the survey, 0% of the businesses that completed the survey are considering closing. That's good. Um, yeah. Um, we've been received a request that people that we focus on contractors and restaurants, um, light manufacturing warehouses, um, which makes sense. The contractors, I'm not quite sure of how they want us to focus on them. Um, I think I, I simply don't know. All right. Um, one person said communication between the town and business is non-existent. It would be interesting to know the type of business because I know that I make contact with the retail businesses consistently. Oh. Um, some of the businesses and offices or the or um, some of the other businesses you don't. I don't talk to the big businesses, so I'm not sure what they're getting at and I'm not sure what they're looking to be communicated. Um, well, if we write these, if we make note of the questions that we have, that you have, that Ray has and other people have from the survey results, then what we can do is construct another survey over the next, I would recommend waiting until, you know, the June, July timeframe um, when businesses pick up during the summer. Yeah. What I would also like to poll is to be able to track, you know, like seasonally or what the trends are 
over the course of the year for certain businesses. So for example, some of the businesses that really seem to be going great guns, uh, and I was actually surprised when we had um, the massage, you know, the massage, the beauty, the yoga, they are doing very well. So we have Truth Organic Spa towards Shrewsbury line in Grafton. But then recently we had Scarlet Spa come in over the last couple of years. And I was quite frankly wondering how is the town going to be able to, you know, we get, will they get business? And they're going great guns, as was that business next door to them that you and I visited right there. Um, what's you the have the, the country store and you have the accountant or a tax guy, a financial planner, or whatever. Yeah, but no, there was the other business that you and I went in to see that's right there next to the I'm not, account. She I'm had not, an ex it's an exercise place. Yeah. Yeah, the yeah. gym. The gym. So these things seem to be doing well. Obviously, the liquor stores are doing well. Uh, we've seen the car repair shops, the automotive, the state, you know, the state stable and staples of the town doing well. Some of the new restaurants in town seem to be doing fine, as are the, the, the nutrition and the drink places. I mean, the people who showed up for our January event at the post office pub, they seemed pretty pleased when we were talking to them and making the rounds. So clearly, we know that Grafton likes to eat, drink, and, you know, get massages and things like that. Um, most of the stable restaurants were also doing well, like Post Office Pub, Reunion, um, those things. And of course, Bread Guy Breads is just knocking it out of the park. People can't get enough of that. Um, there are some businesses like consulting businesses that don't get as much foot traffic and they could probably use some help, but how do you help them? Well, if you're a consultant, you really don't want anybody that isn't in your industry to help you. Um, I think if you talk about growing our, let's call it B2C type businesses, our quality of life businesses, that's really coming down to having additional physical facilities for those businesses to go into. I can't add another nice quality restaurant without mm -hmm. having a building to put them into. Yes, exactly. Um, so so you, the you, next... You, no, go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's, it's, it, it's one of the challenges. It's like you look at Bullock Plaza, well, we don't own it, but could we make mixed use out of that, put a nice whatever on the first floor, maybe even have it some offices? Those are things we're encouraging. Those are things we've zoned for. But without being the owner or the developer, we're not having a say. But that's where the opportunity comes to improve the quality of life in Grafton. Yeah, I agree. And so coming full circle, your idea of trying to get that 100,000, 200,000 square foot mixed use office building to get in life sciences, businesses and things like that is the next step in the evolution to move this past, you know, just the small businesses. And by the way, I think small businesses are wonderful. They're the fabric of the community. Um to a, to a large extent, but to really get where we want Grafton to grow, we need to expand and have have that the the larger businesses <clears throat> so, in the office building. So let's, let's talk about the about the um, the business owners event at uh, um, at the post office pub. You know, and in uh, I wish there were more people here. You know, as do I, because. Um, I want to know what went what went well and and what 
could be improved uh, because we're going to do it again. That's yes. for sure. All right. Um, so, you know, I thought that it went very well for the first time. I thought yes. it was well attended. I thought it was, you know, people got around and talked to each other and uh -huh. CMRC was there and, you know, Fiona was there and Bob was there. And, it, it, you know, there was, there was all, you know, it was very good. I mean, I, I talked to people I hadn't seen in years, you know, so um, <clears throat> I, I don't know, you know, what we could do to, to improve that or, but, you know, that's, that's what I'm looking for. Well, for, from my perspective, I feel like having CMRPC there, especially with them conducting the interviews in conjunction with the master plan, mm. I think worked really well. So in the future, I agree with you, it'd be beneficial to do it. I think we should also have another agenda where we're getting information from those business owners right. while they're there. Um, it's like, to Laura's point, if we had some sort of survey there and we ask questions from the survey or whatever it is, then we get an information feedback that we could use. Um, I, I want it so we have an agenda um, there and we're benefiting from the knowledge we're gathering. And the goal would be to have communication going both, both ways. So in other words, ask, ask live questions. Yeah. What, mm -hmm. you know, what, what, you know, what can we do to, I mean, I know I walked around and, you know, talked to people and, and, and said, you know, what can we do to help you? And, you know, um, you know, it was uh, it was great to see you know Kevin Hill there from from All Steel and and you know mm -hmm. they're they're doing well, um, you know and uh, uh, Jimmy Collette was there from Felton yeah. Crafton and you know that was it was now there's somebody I haven't seen in a long time and you know it was it was good to see him and uh, right uh, but but and he had the issue with the fire too yeah well yeah yeah and I built that building <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, but um, you know, I, I, I mean, I get good feedback. They thought that was, the people that I talked to, which I talked to everybody who was there, they thought it was great. They thought it was great. Yeah, it was an outlet that they haven't really had. And right. they were they were extremely enthusiastic about it. Now, and if yeah. that happened, we were well attended. People stayed throughout the evening. I mean, some people yeah. came in late, but most people stayed until the end. Um. And if you have to figure that was a cold night in January. So imagine if we did something in May, June, or July when the weather was nice. What I would suggest um, going forward is that we can do, we have this baseline survey, okay? We could try and do another one before an event or alternatively, and we could ask them to fill out the questions while they're there. But I'm thinking we have enough information now with the baseline survey to be able to put together a presentation for them. Now, I don't know, is there any, uh, is there any video capabilities there? Um, no. I'm just, no. Okay, so we, we we would have to have Bob, Bob bring a camera in for Grafton Community TV or ooh, something. Yeah. Um, okay, but we could we could do little present. We could do an informal presentation of what we've learned. I mean, ha just have a couple of guest speakers at the head of the thing saying, "Hey, we're not going to keep you from the mingling and mixing and the good food and you know libations, but you know, have an agenda like that and." also say, listen, we want to be Grafton Economic Development Committee. We are a thriving entity, but to make things better, we want to have a lot, we would like to establish open lines of two-way communication. We want to hear from you on what initiatives we could take, et cetera, how we could work with you. Um, so have a little bit of a formal agenda going forward and say, you know, where we'd have people, where somebody can get up and talk for 15 or 20 minutes, give some presentations, tell them in a more formal way, but still 
easily accessible. Here's what we are. Here's what we're doing. Here's how we're trying to model this. Have a suggestion box there. You know, that people could put well, put things in. You know, I think these these are all, you know, they're all great ideas. And, and obviously, we're going to have it again. Yeah. So, um, you know, we've got some time before before any of this happens. I just would like to have more. More. Input. Yes. Yeah. In our meetings to, uh, you right. know, to, <laughs> to work all this out. But that's. Well, know. I mean, whatever, whatever you'd like to, you know, however you when we get more people, you know, more of a quorum, certainly. I'm on board to help in any way that I can. I think uh, Nicole, Nikki did a great job yeah. putting that together. Oh, Everybody I mean, liked the whole, it. The whole thing went, it went very well. I I thoroughly enjoyed it. I thought yeah. it was great. I thought it was great. Um, you know, it, it, one of the good things is that, you know, over the past, uh, you know, year and a half, you know, the economic development in town has gone, it done well. You know, we've got um, we get a thirty thousand square foot building permitted out in at uh, Centennial Drive. We've got apartments that are going out there. We've got uh, uh, Steve's two hundred thousand square foot building. We've got UPS eight hundred and sixty five thousand square foot building. Um, Forward and, finally. Yep, and and you know, and those those are all great things that uh, you know, great mm -hmm. for the economic development in this town. That's you know, we've. We've been kind of, you know, sitting in a lull for probably 10 or 15 years. And, and now all of a sudden things are happening and it's great. Yeah. And it's great. And the land of from Wyman Gordon sold too. Yeah. It did? Yeah. Do we know who bought it? No. Well, that will, that yeah, will be interesting. <laughs> hey, hey, they, they'll pop their heads up at some point in time. Oh, yeah. I know. Does anybody know what's, by the way, talk about development, what's going on with the sushi bar that's supposed to be coming in to replace uh, they, Hunter uh, Grill? Uh, they're not going in there now. They're not. They uh, they didn't renew their, their liquor license and uh, and they're not they're not uh, moving forward with any project. So is it just going to sit empty except for the barber shop? No idea. No idea. Don't know anything. That, that's as much as I know about it. So. And do we know what's going on because of uh, with um, the old uh, town recycling center, the post office, and that other building because well, they yeah, wanted so to that's... build something? Yeah, the that's, apartment that's, building's there. That's a developer that's going to build apartments there, and and that is still moving forward. And that one that one private home, it looks like it's an apartment. They, 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 they don't look like they're going to sell out because they've done a lot of improvements recently. Okay, so then where would the apartment buildings go? Would that be contiguous, or I mean, what what happens to the post office? Because I know that they were talking about. The post office might close in two or three years, and yeah, the post office lease comes up in a couple of years. Um, but it's the U.S. government, so I don't. You don't know what they're going to do. I do know that they're having budgetary problems, and there's yeah. a real question of why we need three post offices in Grafton and three zip codes. Yeah, that's true. I like that post office though because it's nearest to me. Uh, the one that's down in what Fisherville, the south end of town, mm -hmm. is very small. But I mean, I was I was just curious um, about what was what was happening. But it's and what's happening on Pleasant Street is that that's going forward as well. I believe so. That's approved. That's approved. That's approved. So. Well, it's good if we can put if we can do all these things. I mean, what other what other events do we have scheduled? We were rescheduling something for April, weren't we? At the yeah, um, Mass Bio um, visit from Kendall. The people from Tufts were unavailable. They counted with some dates during the summer. Then the people and they weren't available there. So now that seems like it's getting pushed off to September, October with the last dates. Um, 
I, I, I think it's a major time commitment for the woman who's in charge of Mass Bio to come out here um, because the event's like three, four hours plus the drive and stuff like that. So she's trying to find other ways to do things without visiting Grafton. Now, we had a pretty good turnout at that event last year. Well, that no, that that was a different event. That was Grafton's <clears throat> Open for Business. Yes. I, the event that I'm thinking of and I would compare it to is when Ken Turner from Massachusetts Life Science Center visited. Oh, that okay. was a very small, intimate meeting. And we got tours of the Tufts campus and we specifically tied what Tufts was doing to their interaction with the private sector. So this isn't a mass advertised to everybody. It's just very small, intimate to okay. take it in a deeper way. Then I was then I was confused. The mass open for business, a Grafton open for business. Can we do that again? I mean, that seems to be a very good turnout. I'm not sure what came of it, but it's you know it's nice to. We, we, we could do Grafton's Open for Business. I need to see if the funds are there to do that. Mm -hmm. um, and who's going who's gonna to attend? You know, it's not like Steve Steve Goodman's not going to attend again. I mean, he's already, you know. Right. You know, but, uh, you know, we, we, need the, we need the people from Tufts and we need the other people. That, right. You know, so. The, the, the challenge we're having with Tufts right now is that the key people have moved on and Tufts hasn't put new people in place. So as um, we were just alluding to, is it, are you getting a good bang for your punch? Yeah. Yeah. But they are advertising know. the properties. I've asked if they're doing an outright sale, they say no. And they seem to be doing 99 year leases. Yeah, so, well, so I I think the market it's it's like they're doing was it Massport is doing ninety nine year leases near the airport or something like that they can get away with that because there's a limited amount of choices there I think when you come out to Grafton because of the amount of land around here that they can go elsewhere and not do the ninety nine year lease. So it is in market supported. Yeah. Okay, well, um, why don't we uh, uh, schedule a meeting for April and, and hopefully yeah. hopefully more people at Kyle just called me and said that he just got off a plane and it was, oh. he was uh, delayed over an hour so he would have been here, but uh, yeah. you know, um, but let's let's schedule something for April and uh, Okay, we'll go from there. Let's try yeah, and do it so we aren't conflicting. So what are the planning things? boards? Oh, not the planning board. Oh, yeah, okay. So well, the planning boards are first and first and uh, third, right? Right. So if well, we that's going to be thrown off because you. Got, oh no, it's yeah. Easter Monday. Yeah, yeah. So. so so if we did something on the twenty second. Right. Okay. All right. Well, that sounds good. I'll when we get it set, and then, um, what would we have on? Are you going to put an agenda together, Ray? Yeah. Uh, I'm saying with some of the things that we talked about for tonight. Obviously, you're going to have an agenda. <laughs> yeah. But I hope so. Yeah. No. But no. I. I. You know, we've got some momentum here, and I'd yeah. like to. I'd like to keep it going because I loved the reaction and the reception that we got from that event yeah no it, it no. was it was very positive and again what's happened you know in the in the past year year and a half is is it, it throughout the town has been very positive in in the uh uh it's good for the taxpayers trust me yeah. real good for the taxpayers because uh um, you know we're going to have we're going to have some big pain buildings in uh, 
you know, in apartments, not everybody wants the apartments, but, you know. Uh, well, I do. We have a housing shortage. Oh, yeah, we do. Absolutely. I know. But speaking speaking for myself, just a personal thing, it's going to be sad to see that open field on Pleasant Street go. And I do worry, besides the loss of an open field, which is just, you know, an ergonomic issue um, or a pastoral issue, I do worry about the impact on traffic on that road because people zip around there like nobody's business. But, you know, I want, I personally want to see a traffic light or a four way stop light in the town center because sometimes I feel like it's just NASCAR or bumper car derby there. You can't get you can't get across the thing. I'm like, look, you have to look four ways. It's you know, yeah, oh yeah, it's it's scary. Yep. So, but yeah, just let me know what, hey, you, hey, what you need. Aren't to you do. Boston train? You're a Boston train driver. What are you worried about? Um, I'm a New York train driver and a Washington D.C. train driver. Oh, and, piece of cake. Yeah, piece of well, yeah. Except when you get up there, it's like. You're playing, you know, dare me. <laughs> I dare you to come out of that intersection. <laughs> and it it has gotten a lot busier. And sometimes you sit there for five or ten minutes if you're coming up the road. If you're not coming, because everybody coming up 122, 140, mm -hmm. they're just zooming along. So if you're trying to get across, it's tough. You know, well, one of the one of the challenges we have, and this is town wide is we have to deal with the current infrastructure that's in place and acknowledge if we're going to make significant improvements that that's going to require some money. Will, will, will putting in a traffic light require a lot of money though? Well, it depends on, I mean, I've put in traffic lights uh, that cost uh, upward of uh, $2.2 million. So it depends on on what the uh, what the traffic is and and how it's operated. Well, when I first moved here, there was no traffic light on Providence Road and Millbury Street. That's yep. new. So I don't know what that cost, but at the very least, if you take one twenty two south going into West Upton, okay? They have, there's, when you make a turn by that cornerstone church and you go up a few blocks, they have a four way flashing stop sign, which I think is nice. That would be good to at least put in there. That's just my suggestion because, you know, too many people are going through there. And how many times have we had people just crash into the stone pillars there mm -hmm. along the common? Along the, you know, I, I I think we're in agreement that we should look at it, but let's also agree that we should um, defer to the traffic engineers. Oh yeah, I'm just I'm just telling you my my personal experience. I you know I've seen an increase in just anecdotal data on my part. I have seen a market increase in traffic and a market decrease in the willingness of people to let you feed in. And be respectful. Okay. Yep. Ray, right. you want to add anything? No. Well, okay. Well, so uh, the next meeting will be uh, the twenty second of uh, April, and um, and uh, we'll hopefully get everybody here, and we'll will be a full agenda. So. Okay. okay. All right. Terrific. Great. Thank you, Laura. Thank well, you for thanks. your time. Okay. Have a great night.